Here at Hacksmith Industries, we're on a never-ending quest to make fiction a reality. And we've done hundreds of Make It Real projects over the years. Crazy things like our Aliens power loader, a Back to the Future hoverboard, and of course, our world's first plasma lightsaber. And while most people might think what I do is dangerous, and I don't blame them, there are even some projects that I thought were too dangerous to finish. So without further ado, here are our top 10 projects you've never seen. And maybe we'll let you guys vote on which one you'd like us to finish. Number one, or is it number 10? Flying like Iron Man. We started that almost seven years ago now. I was determined to fly. We started by slapping literal rockets to my wrists, moved on to using electric ducted fans, and even wanted to use miniature jet engines to create a real working jetpack. Lots of testing happened, and we were seeing a lot of success. But at the time, it was still a really difficult and expensive project for us. We tried our best, but on April 1st, 2017, Richard Browning of Gravity Industries came out with his jet suit the closest thing to flying like Iron Man. It's impossible to put it in words, but it is almost like that dream that people have about flying. You genuinely have a three-dimensional freedom where you can just go wherever you think. I even got to try a suit out, and it was absolutely incredible. I still got to head back to the UK to master it. Since he had already invested millions and years of his life into building such an amazing jet suit, we didn't see much reason to continue our project. And then, just last year, Jake Laser picked up the torch I dropped and made an electric ducted fan version and flew like Iron Man. I'm so proud of him. Despite all that, I still wanted to fly. I just wanted to do it in a unique way. I mean, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel, which leads us to project number two. What's that project? The Go-Go Gadget Helicopter Hat. Go-Go Gadget Copter! I don't think I even have to explain why this was a dangerous idea. I mean, what could go wrong with two giant propellers spinning at insanely high speeds just inches above my head? The plan was to use two of these super powerful MRAX 208 motors, and then have a whole mechanism pivot on a gimbal. The system promised to have a very high efficiency compared to EDFs or even jet engines, easy control, and over 150 kilograms of lift. Unfortunately, running such powerful motors reliably was more challenging than expected, and a single point of failure in any part of this system would mean certain death. A perfect three-point land. But I still kind of want to finish it. The next project comes in with all the childhood wonder of jumping off a roof with an umbrella. But in case you haven't tried that, it does not work. For project number three, I give you the jet engine umbrella. We did what any reasonably sane person would do, and mounted three jet engines to an umbrella. Let's recap. The exhaust is over 800 degrees Celsius. It makes over 122 decibels of ear-deafening whine, and not to mention there's a literal tank of gasoline strapped to my back. What could go wrong? Well, I jumped. Now, how awesome would it be to punch with 40,000 volts of electricity? Number four is our Black Widow Taser Gauntlets. This was one of Riley's projects. Do you remember Riley? <laughs> he strapped five 40,000 volt taser modules to a wristband with a gravity switch that would turn them all on at the same time when you threw a punch. After it was built, poor Bogdan had a bit of an accident. He made a little mistake and picked it up, turning it over to look at. Remember that gravity switch? Yep, he figured out it was on. After rethinking YouTube's community guidelines around a project like this, we decided that maybe we shouldn't post it. However, that didn't stop Nate and Callie from the King of Random from trying it out. I'm Black Widow. This video is sponsored by AG1. AG1 is a comprehensive daily nutrition drink that I personally use. Here's why. Six months ago, my daughter started daycare, which was great, except that daycare is a cesspool of sick kids infecting each other and bringing it home to their parents. It felt like I was getting sick with something new every week. So three months ago, I started drinking AG1 to support my immune function, and now it's the most important part of my daily routine. Vitamin C, zinc, and functional mushrooms are all here. It has everything you need to support your energy levels, gut health, and immune system. With one tasty scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. I'm able to scoop, mix, and drink AG1 all while holding a squirming toddler. It's that easy. Best part is, if you use my link, AG1 will give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com hacksmith to get started on your order. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now back to James. 
Number five wasn't exactly dangerous, but our sponsor pulled out and we never ended up posting the video. The year was 2021. Between the pandemic and ever-changing employment laws, telepresence robots quickly became all the hype. So we decided to build one. The sponsor thought it would be cool to make it look like it was put together from e-waste and junk from the scrapyard. We said okay, signed a contract, and built our janky telepresence robot. But when it came time to unveil the finished product, the sponsor was disappointed that it looked like it was made from junk, despite that being the thing they asked for. Three, two, one. <laughs> and if you thought that project was weird, number six gets even weirder. Destroying giant gummy bears. Even I thought this was kind of unusual. The sponsor made chewable gummy vitamins, so we made and tested giant gummy bears against our arsenal of projects. It turns out pouring a giant vat of gelatin into a gummy bear mold is pretty hard. How many of these do we need? All of them. Look at that team. It's working. Oh no, it is leaking at the bottom. Well, oh this... no, it's going faster. <laughs> <laughs> What was most surprising is the fact that a gummy bear is actually pretty lightsaber resistant. The full video of our gummy bear destruction was scheduled and ready to go. But at the last minute, the brand cancelled all ads for the month. They hadn't even seen our video yet. Luckily, the contract stayed we'd still get paid for the sponsorship. We just never needed to post the video. We've posted it for our YouTube channel members to watch and enjoy. So if you want to check it out, consider supporting the channel with a YouTube membership. Number 7. A Radioactive Arc Reactor Iron Man's arc reactor is one of the most recognizable pieces of Marvel technology. Nice. And we do have real-world nuclear generators, such as the one on the Voyager spacecraft or in the Perseverance rover. It should be possible to just size one down small enough to fit in my chest cavity, right? That's so hard. Even if all it could do was keep your phone charged for a couple years, that would be pretty cool. So we started designing. When we started actually developing the project, we realized that the problem wouldn't just be the insane cost of tritium at about $30,000 a gram. Precious tritium. But actually the availability of it. It's actually extremely rare, and there's only about 500 grams of it produced per year. And most of the tritium you find online is fake. The entire world's supply is only about 25 kilograms. Now, we'd only need about a gram of it. But to put that in perspective, that's enough tritium to make over 10,000 Rolex watch dials glow, the main use of tritium in the industry. We could use some other radioactive sources, but I didn't really want to end up like the radioactive Boy Scout. Now, number eight comes from one of the greatest Spider-Man villains of all time, Dr. Octopus. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Nothing will stand in our way. Let's think about how awesome it would be to throw someone 10 feet away with your snake-like robot arms and toss them across a parking lot or have an extra set of hands to help you. We tried multiple ways of actuating and controlling the unique limb motion, including flexible pneumatic actuators and even nitinol wire tendons, the same material we use for our self-healing Wolverine claws. As epic as the idea sounded, it became clear that achieving a system powerful enough to lift any kind of useful weight while having accurate enough control and being light enough to even wear on your back was a little more difficult than even anticipated. Even if it was light, just having something 10 feet long hanging off your back would just tip you over. Shut it down, huh? Number nine involves one of my favorite dark heroes. Venom. I, I mean, uh, Venom. I'm so sorry about your friends. Are you gonna eat anybody else? Most likely. Imagine having a containment vessel of your very own symbiote a glass tube with an alien-like creature inside that moves as if it's alive. The plan was to use ferrofluid and electromagnets to cause the fluid to move in an alien-like manner inside the tube or even crawl around on a magnetic bed. However, ferrofluid is really hard to work with and stains everything. We spent months trying to figure out a suspension fluid or a coating that would allow the ferrofluid to not stick to the glass. Unfortunately, our attempts were futile. When the second Venom movie came out, we tried revisiting the project again, but hit the same roadblock. It's just too freaking messy. Luckily, Jake Laser took a bullet for the team and covered himself in the stuff. An awesome display, but one he never wants to do again either. If $1,000 was on the line, do you think you could beat a robot at dodgeball? Number 10 is our undefeatable dodgeball robot. We had this grand vision of making a revolutionary robot that would throw dodgeballs at lightning fast speeds with pinpoint accuracy. We enlisted the help of our friend Dave, an expert in robotics programming, to bring this idea to light. Using his industrial robot from the Carbonite project, we had hoped to add a camera system that would detect people and launch dodgeballs at them with precision and speed. But it turns out throwing the balls fast enough was the challenge. 
And finally, number 11. Wait, I thought we only had 10. I guess you guys get a bonus. Number 11, the Winter Soldier Arm. Imagine being able to punch through a solid wall and smash cinder blocks like sandcastles. I made an extremely strong arm sleeve out of layered Kevlar, rubber composite, and titanium reinforcement. The arm should offer some serious protection and be strong enough to cause vast amounts of damage. Stay there. But right before we tested it, I broke my hand testing another completely unrelated project. Actually, it wasn't even a project. It was a baseball. Between a rather long recovery and a newfound realization that I am in fact not invincible, we just haven't found the time to test this arm out. On the plus side, I do have some real titanium in my hand now. Nice. We also might be doing a collab very soon with an epic company that makes real bionic limbs capable of epic destruction. So consider subscribing to see that and so much more. Like I always say, we're just getting started. Thanks for watching. Before you click away, I want to tell you about Hacksmith.store. It's not just another merch store. It's the starting point for phase two of our master plan, with the goal to create and sell technologies to better mankind. We sell quality products we actually use, and we reinvest everything back into supporting that goal. My personal favorite is the Mini Saber. It's currently backordered, but we're getting more in a couple of weeks. And hopefully, our patent-pending flame changer will be available in a couple of months. This is our retractable screwdriver, which lets you effortlessly switch between six of the most common bits with just one hand. We have the full-size and precision drivers, and we're coming out with hex bit versions soon. Now, if I were to travel back in time and only bring one thing, I would bring this pocket reference book because it's jam-packed full of useful information. We also just released the Handyman version. This is a fantastic pen. It's got a ruler, a bubble level, a stylus, and a precision screwdriver. It goes great with our water-resistant stone paper notebook, the perfect notebook for in the shop where things get a little wet and greasy. Check it all out at hacksmith.store. Oh, and members get a discount.